What an intro. Sonic waddling along like he shat himself. Good morning, afternoon, evening, and good night, depending on where you are. It's your friendly tech guy here with another Sonic fan game. This one based on something that is perhaps quite a polarizing entry into the Sonic franchise, but one that I actually really like. One I proudly display in the Hairy Tech Cave. But before we get going, please like, share, subscribe, all that good YouTube stuff. It really does mean a lot, guys, when you do. Sonic 3D, or 3D Blast, or 3D's Flicky's Island, was the final Sonic game to be released on the Sega Mega Drive, and the first to be released on the Saturn. It ditched the well-established and received 2D side-scrolling platform style and replaced it with an isometric one. I wonder where they got that idea from. The controls are questionable, and Sonic's trademark speed has been toned down to a... waddle. The story is typical Sonic fare, but we don't play Sonic games for their captivating stories, do we? Or do we? As you play through the level and destroy badniks, you collect the now free flickies that once inhabited them. Depositing them in big rings allows you to progress through the level. Despite its failings, I'm a fan of this game. The incredible art style, the clever gameplay ideas, and the little flicky shields. How can you not be a fan of that? So when one morning, as I was taking care of my morning download, I found out that someone had made a 2D conversion of Sonic 3D. I was happier than Kim Kardashian at a Spandex L. I promptly raced to my PC, downloaded the game, sat back with controller in hand, and was met with a good and competently put together Sonic fan game. But certain stables that made Sonic 3D what it was are missing. The music, zone styling, homing shield, and some of the enemy designs have made it across, but the core mechanic of collecting flickies to progress is missing. Perhaps that's not the fault of developers, but instead a limitation of the engine used. But I was really impressed to discover the spinning top had been added to the rusty ruin zone. Although that thing never made sense, a character famed for spinning into a ball to break obstacles can only break these pillars if spinning in a different direction. What the f Assets from previous Sonic games have been used, and I love the little touches added. The afterglow and rings are collected, for example, and I'm a real big fan of the level design. These are some of the most open level designs I've ever seen, and really do harker back to the designs from Sonic 3D. But some can be a little confusing, and I'm not afraid to admit I timed out several times in Rusty Ruin Zone. Now, let's talk about the boss battles. These are without doubt the most brutal, terror-inducing, sweat-producing, controller-breaking Robotnik encounters I've ever seen in a Sonic game, fan or not. So I say, no, I beg the developer, Please, for the love of God, and my poor Xbox controller, tone these bad boys down! And while we're on the subject of toning down, what's up with the special stages? Everything moves so fast, it's almost impossible to complete them. This is in stark contrast to the original special stages, which were famed for being so slow. To be honest, I avoided them completely during my playthrough. So to sum up, this is a good but brutal Sonic fan game. I just wish we could have some more of the original's flicky collecting gameplay. I really do think that in a 2D realm, this could lead to some truly original level designs. I encourage you all to go and try this one, but to be clear, I am not responsible should you end up smashing your controller to pieces. Ladies and gents, I will catch you next time.